Hello students, this is Professor Vicente Saga. Welcome to my class. This is part two of chapter one uh, presentation. Chapter one, accounting and the business environment. This is where we left off in part one. Uh, we talked about accounting rules. Another name for them is accounting principle, generally accepted accounting principle or accounting standards. I will say that it is very important for us to understand these rules, how to apply them in order for us to be able to provide valuable information to different constituencies. Okay. Now, we talk about the economic entity assumption in part one. Now, let's take a look at the features of a corporation. Everything that we are going to talk about in this class uh, is going to uh, be discussed from the perspective of a corporation. Corporation is one of several ways of setting up a company. So here are some of the characteristics of a corporation, separate legal entity. So a corporation as one form of business, uh, let me back up. Every company has to be organized or set up in one of four different ways. So every company that you have out there on the street, your neighborhood grocery store, IBM, Apple's, you name it, every company is set up in one of four different ways. Number one, we call it sole proprietorship. Number two, partnership. Number three, corporation. <coughs> Number four, limited liability company. So our focus in this chapter is to talk about accounting principles uh, uh, and how to apply them in relationship to a corporation. They are, the principles are the same, but there are just some peculiarities uh, depending on the type of company that we are zeroing in on. That being said, let's take a look at some of the characteristics of a corporation. Number one, separate legal entity. What does that mean? A corporation has to be brought into existence through the state law. So when you set up a corporation, for legal purposes, we are not talking about only business purposes now, but for legal purposes, a corporation is different and separate for, from the owners or from the owner. So, if the corporation goes under, you cannot hold the owners personally liable because in the eye of the law, the owner and the corporation are separate and different. So that is what we mean by separate legal entity. Number two, continuous life and transfer, transferability of ownership. In other words, a lot of corporations, especially the big ones, they have they tend to last for a long time, okay? And how ownership change is very easy. I mean, these are primarily publicly traded companies. We also have some small, closely held corporations. But primarily these are big companies. Ownership can easily change. Why? Because you can go to downtown tomorrow and buy IBM stock. Then it becomes one of the owners of IBM. Or you can sell their stock you get rid of your ownership. No mutual agency, the owners are there cannot uh, uh, engage in any business transaction that will bind the corporation. The corporation is on its own. Limited liability of Tokura, this is very important. I did talk about this before. If the corporation did something wrong or the corporation goes under, then your liability as an owner or stockholder, what you can lose, the maximum amount that you can lose is limited to what you invest. You can't lose more than that. Then, of course, separation of ownership and management. Usually, the people that manage those corporations are different from the owners. Now, uh, here is this uh, exhibit that talks about four different ways of setting up a company. So, any company that you see out there, like I said, is set up in one of these different ways. And they talk about the different characteristics of these uh, different companies. I'm not going to go into that at all. You can go through this on your own. Our main focus is the cooperation. And we already talked about the characteristics or the features of the cooperation. Moving along, here is a typical structure of a cooperation. So a typical cooperation is structured as this. You have the stockholders, the owners of the company, and they will elect the board of directors. The board of directors are not there every day. They are there once a year or two times a year to give, uh, assist the company to map out vision of the company. Then you have uh, the board of directors who uh, 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 hire the chairperson of the board, or you have the chairperson of the board, then you have the president, 
and then you have a, 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 a upper level management and uh, every other person that uh, works for the corporation. Now, moving along, remember I told you about the rules that govern accounting. What is another name for the rules that govern accounting? We also call them generally accepted accounting principles. You need to commit that to memory. Generally accepted accounting principles or accounting rules. Another name for it, remember? Accounting standards. These words are used interchangeably. The bulk of what we are going to learn in this class is understanding these accounting principles, how to apply them in order for us to produce valuable information that people use to make different business decisions uh, for different purposes. So let's take a look at some of the principles, okay? Just some. We are going to be talking about uh, more than this in, uh, uh, later on. Now, number one, the economic entity assumption. You remember that? We did talk about that. The company and the owner are separate and different for legal, for business purposes. They are separate and different for business purposes, okay? Uh, uh, this is true for every type of company. Proprietorship, partnership, corporation, limited liability, it doesn't matter. This is true for business purposes. But legally, that is not true. Legally, that is not true. Only a corporation, and of course, to a large extent, limited liability corporation is separate and different for legal purposes. You need to know that. Actually, that is going to be on your exam. That is going to be on your exam. For business purposes, any type of business is separate and different from the business. And we call that economic entity assumption. So moving along, let's take a look at uh, another principle or rule. We call this cost principle. Another name for this is historical cost. We call this cost principle or we call it historical cost. What does that mean? This principle simply says that you need to catch it. This is important. As a matter of fact, these four rules or accounting principles are going to be on your exam. So like I said, the cost principle simply says that uh, assets should be recorded based on the actual cost. What does that mean? <coughs> Let me give you an example. Your company wants to buy a computer. You did all the research all day long and the computer is going to cost $3,000. For some strange reasons, you go out there, somebody didn't know what he or she is doing, and somebody decided to sell you the computer for $500. And the computer is actually selling for $3,000. Even though you bought the computer for you bought the computer for $500, but the computer is actually worth $3,000. When you come to your business, you have to record the computer as $500. You cannot record it as $3,000, even though you know that the computer is worth $3,000. Why? Because the cost principle says so. It's the rule, all right? It doesn't have to make sense. It is the rule. You have to understand the rule and how to apply the rule. So let's move on and talk about the going concern assumption. Again, here's another key word. It's an assumption. It's an assumption. What does that mean? That means in the world of business, we make an assumption that every company is going to be in existence forever. What does that mean? How does that work? See, that is why some people will start a business and they will start a lease with their landlord for 10 years, 15 years, even though 85% of new businesses fail within the, within the first five years, 85% of new businesses fold up within the first five years. But here, when a company is started, we assume that the company is going to be there forever. Can you just imagine somebody starting the business and say, hmm, you know, in another two or three years, they'll be out of business? No, everybody's optimistic that they're going to be there forever. So that assumption is so true. As a matter of fact, there's a very interesting example. The city of Chicago, uh, just a few years ago, during a, a, a Richard Daly era, the city signed a 75 years contract with a company that is now responsible for collecting uh, mirror uh, fees, you know, when you park, the parking mirror fees. 
75 years. That company might not be here in 75 years, who knows? Uh, the world may not be here in 75 years, who knows? But the fact of the matter is, in the world of business, that's the assumption that we make. Moving along, here's another principle, monetary unit assumption. The monetary unit assumption simply says that uh, there has to be a monetary unit. There has to be a moni particular monetary unit that we use to measure our business deals and transactions. In the United States, it's dollar and cent. In Nigeria, it is Naira and Kobo. In Japan, it is Yen. So that is the monetary unit assumption. Now, these are all gap. Who cares? Eventually, we are going to talk about how to apply all these principles for, uh, for, for a particular purposes. Now, moving along, let's take a look at the rules that govern accounting. This is very exciting. You need to catch this. Listen to this carefully. Oh, in part one, we talk about Financial Accounting Standard Board. I can't recall, and uh, we also talk about SEC here, where they told you that the SEC gives the responsibility of creating accounting rules to FASB, and FASB is enough for proper mission. Now, listen, here's something else that might interest you. Accounting is not an exact, accounting is a science, because there are a lot of things that we do the same across the board. But accounting is not an exact science like mathematics or physics, because in mathematics, 2 plus 2 is 4 in the United States. In Japan, 2 plus 2 is 4. Everywhere in the world, 2 plus 2 is 4. That is an exact science. Accounting is not an exact science. Rather, we say that accounting is a social science. Why is it a social science? Because each country's legal environment, business environment, economic environment, has something to do with each country accounting rules. So because of that, because every country does it slightly differently, we say that accounting is a social science, not, a, not an exact science like physics or mathematics. That, that being said, take a look at this. Here is, in the United States, we call accounting rules generally accepted accounting principles. But there's another body, and the, the principles are created by who? This is on your exam. In the United States, we call accounting rules generally accepted accounting principles. And those accounting principles are created by whom? Financial Accounting Standard Board, FASB. However, there's another international body. We call this International Accounting Standards Board. This body is responsible for coming up with a bunch of accounting rules that are called IFRS. We call them International Financial Reporting Standards. All right? These standards or rules are slightly, to a large extent, are different from the rules that we use in the United States. We say they are principle-based, but the most important thing I want to get across to you is, right now, more than 120 countries around the world are using international, are using IFRS, which, is, uh, which are created by International Accounting Standard Board. This is gaining more and more momentum. It appears that somewhere along the line, the United States is going to join other countries in using this set of accounting rules. And when that time comes, obviously, all of us are going to be required to learn these rules. But right now, uh, it, it is being taught uh, gradually in the, in the United States. Ethics in accounting, what does that mean? In the accounting profession, in the world of business, ethics means doing the right thing. Accountants, accounting students, we are encouraging everybody to do the right thing. Don't bend the rules. Don't pause the rule. Uh, you know, uh, 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 understand the rules and apply them the way they are supposed to be applied. All right. So, moving along, let's take a look at uh, objective three. Describe the accounting equation and define assets, liabilities, and equity. Now, I think we are getting to the exciting part of this chapter, and, uh, and that is objective three. Look at what it said there. <coughs> the accounting equation. What is this? 
Here they said it is the basic tool of accounting, measuring resources of the business and the claims to those resources. What does that mean? That simply means every company has assets. Well, first of all, I want you to take a look at this. It's very important. Equation is equation. That's the equation sign. The left side has to be equal to the right side. So this equation is special for accountants. It is not a regular equation, but we call it accounting equation. And it consists of three elements. Assets, liabilities, assets equals to liabilities plus <coughs> equity. All right? Now, what does that mean? Let me tell you the origin of this uh, uh, equation. Let's assume that you decide to start your business today. And first of all, let's quickly define these three terms. Assets. Assets. Uh, asset is anything of value that is owned by business. Furniture, cash, equipment, land. Liabilities are obligations. They are debt. Look at equity. Equity means ownership, investment. So look at the origin of accounting equation. Let's assume that you decide to start your business today. $30,000. So what happens? You take a check and write it from your personal checking account. You give it to the business. Why? Because of the economic entity concept, okay? Or assumption. We say that you and your business are separate and different. Remember, we just explained that? So the company take on $30,000. Both of you are separate and different for business purposes. Now the company has to record that they have cash of 30000 Now, the $30,000 cash that the company has did not come from the sky. Somebody gave the company $30,000. So the company has to recognize and record that and say, Mr. A invested $30,000 into the company. So as you can see, the company has $30,000 cash 